Whatever you wind up doing is exactly what you should be doing. And I have not behaved one single day of my life, not one day of my life have I behaved and I am fine. I need your help. I can't tell you what it is. You can never ask me about it later and we're going to hurt some people. Who's Kyle going to take? Welcome to the Nikki Medora hey. Show live on YouTube. And yes, the balloons are to celebrate the fact that 15 years ago today at 421 this morning, I officially became a mama. My daughter was born. And as 15 year olds do, that she is sleeping in a room. And I told her, Kim, you cannot get out of here. I told her last <laughs> night, I was like, look, I have, I'm going to do my show. You know, I got some stuff out here for you. Don't wake up until after 11 o'clock because I don't want to, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be on air. When she comes out, she's like, I was not planning on waking up before 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so. teenagers, they can sleep and sleep and sleep. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, well, I didn't think you were going to, but just in case you got a hair up your butt because it was your birthday. You know what I mean? So um, I was like, you just stay in your room. Don't wake up. Roll over like you always do. When, um, no, that's so funny. When you're off from school every every day. Um, this is the Nikki Medora Show. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a fun show. It's Friday. John Rothman is waiting in the wings. We'll bring him on to talk all things politics. Um, also, pg e announcing huge, huge profits. I'm going to ask John about this as well. Like, This can't play well for Newsom, even though Newsom's not running for re-election, obviously. But he has aspirations to the White House. Uh, can something like this follow um, a politician? You know, something that happens in the state. Um, and since it's my daughter's birthday, oh, there's something yet going. Okay, since it's it. my daughter, daughter's birthday, we'll, we're going to talk about this controversial decision by a mother to not celebrate yearly birthdays for her daughter. And what do you think about, you know, big, not necessarily even a big birthday, just celebrating, having a birthday party, the cake, the balloons, everything every single year. We weren't able to get to this other story um, about California saying landlords must allow pets in their rentals. Is that fair to the landlord? Is it fair to the person trying to rent? And that pet is a part of their family. Uh, and then, of course, at the end of the show, Tim Sika will join us. Thank you, Pamela, for the $5 super sticker, by the way. Uh, Harry also, here's to birthdays, a $5 donation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And Steven started us off with a $1.50 super hey, sticker. Thank you, nice. thank you, thank you, Steven, so very much. Yeah, please support the show. We um, can't do it without you. It starts with that thumbs up, and then it continues on with the super chats, which Harry and others have, have used. The super chat is live, so look for the dollar sign there. And then you can be an official Medorable by going to the NikkiMedoroShow.com and signing up for our monthly Patreon, which is how we keep the lights on, as they say. And again, if you like this show, if you like shows like it, myself, uh, Kim, we do this every day, Monday through Friday, and you want to continue to see us, please support the show. And PayPal is also up. So just go to paypal.com, and the email is show at gmail.com. All right, uh, since it is Friday, well, let's do a political roundup with our friend John Rothman. You can Ooh. find him around the world, the political world with John <laughs> Rothman. Happy Friday, my friend. And to you, and happy birthday. 15 years old. I mean, my you know, goodness, it's astounding. your sons, you, you've seen your son. And every time you talk about your sons, I hear in your voice, John, it's just like they're babies. Like, I, I still look at my kid. I don't care how old they look when they come out of their bedroom. Just like they did that first day I met him. And I'm just so like, oh. I'm 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 emotional about the whole thing, but yeah, today, 15 years ago today, I became a mama, so it's awesome. I feel the same way about my yeah. kids, and isn't it wonderful? And it I is. hope everybody does a super sticker at the very minimum today. <laughs> there you uh, go. In, in honor of your motherhood. There you go. That's what I like to hear. Thank you, John. All right, let's get into the politics. Um, a lot of things have happened this week. Um, first off. There is, an, there is the grifts that have been going on. Just to kind of start off on a lighter note, what do we have this week, John? We have Trump sneakers. We have Trump cologne. There was this one comment, and I don't know if you saw it, but I want you to watch this video real quickly and then talk to me about the appeal. Have you ever seen an appeal like this? 
from people who support a politician. I mean, listen to what these commentators were saying about the Trump sneakers. Even the sneaker thing. I was on social media last night. Very interesting. As you see black support eroding from Joe Biden. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. I don't get it, John. I, I really don't get it. Um, I know that obviously this is a supportive quote unquote news channel. Um, is Trump doing this just to pay off his bills? I mean, what's going on here? You know, I can't explain Donald Trump. <laughs> I just know what's going to happen tomorrow in South Carolina. Yes. Where he may win by 30 points, which is something I said on your program mm -hmm. a long time ago. And people said, ah, oh, no, it'll never happen. It's going to happen. And that's the tragedy. Does he have a, an increasing support in the black community? If you believe that, Nikki, I have a bridge I'd like to sell you made out of gold. Uh, it, 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 you know, these are all right wing talking points. Mm. But there is a reality. The people who love Donald Trump love him. They will buy his sneakers. They will buy his cologne. Cologne, cologne with a stench around that man. How could anybody buy the cologne? I don't understand. So all I can say is uh, uh, we're going to see tomorrow. I, I can't wait to see. Remember, in South Carolina, you have a large retired military population. Mm. How are they going to vote for Donald Trump? A man who wants to withdraw from NATO, who mm. has essentially betrayed the values of America in relation to Ukraine. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but we're going to watch tomorrow with great care. I know that you you you're bringing up the military, and I know that this is more Arizona than South Carolina. Uh, I don't know if you saw the online tit for tat between Carrie Lake and <clears throat> pardon me, Megan McCain. Carrie Lake apparently, you know, obviously running for Senate, she feels in Arizona that she needs the McCain support. Uh, she talked poorly about John McCain even after he had died, and she wrote this long post on X trying to kind of extend the olive olive branch as mamas to Megan McCain, and Megan McCain told her to kick rocks in a lot more cruder words than I just used. But kind of talk about the fact that, you know, Megan McCain, her father, John McCain, military man, can people like Trump, like Carrie Lake, kind of walk back that within the military community? And how can certain members of the military community support someone who has talked bad about the FBI, has talked bad about military veterans? How does that happen? Remember, Donald Trump blasted John McCain. He said because yeah. he was captured, he couldn't be a hero. Uh, and we thought... I thought, we all talked about this on, on KGO, about the fact that that was the end of, of Donald Trump. How could any Republican, and remember, John McCain was the Republican nominee for president in 2008. How could any Republican embrace a Donald Trump who dissed John mm -hmm. McCain? And the simple truth is, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's a cult. Yeah. Whatever Donald Trump says, whatever Donald Trump does, they're going to follow along. It doesn't matter that there are 91, 91 indictments against him. It doesn't matter that a judge ruled yesterday that he is going to have to pay north of $400 million. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter that this man tried to subvert the American election in 2020. Uh, it, it, none of this seems to matter. Talk about a Teflon president or a mm -hmm. Teflon former president. But the most shocking uh, thing to me is uh, Donald Trump's attitude toward NATO yeah. and toward the death of Navalny, and that he had the chutzpah to equate himself as a martyr uh, to Navalny, is to me nothing less than obscene. Joe Biden today did a very courageous thing. He stood up and he said to the Republicans in the House of Representatives, what I've been saying, frankly, on my podcast for several weeks now, stand up and give them what they need. Otherwise, the cry of, who lost China, which was the whole thing in 1952, which didn't mean much. It'll mean a lot in this election. Who lost Ukraine? And it'll be the Republicans in the House of Representatives with the support of Donald Trump. This is a complete betrayal of traditional Republican values, a complete repudiation of the cry of freedom, which was what founded the Republican Party. So my sense is that the people who believe in Donald Trump are going to believe in him. That's what a cult is. And that's, mm -hmm. that's unfortunately uh, where we find ourselves. And I was severely criticized by someone 
for whom I have a very high regard, <laughs> excuse me, oh, no. very high regard, who said to me that uh, uh, when I said that Donald Trump had an, an, an ironclad lock on the Republican Party, uh, and they said, how can you say a thing like that? And I said, it's very simple. He does. <laughs> and that's, that's what a cult is. And yeah. so I, I want to emphasize and underline that fact. And I would be remiss if I did not say a word about the whole question of in vitro fertilization. Yeah, I was going to get to that. I want you to know, I had a long discussion with Kim McAllister, and she may want to join in on this uh, with us. Oh, we talked about it at length yesterday as well. And it's just as someone that went through it, as Kim did, and and Kim's here, um, it's it's frightening that this can have ripple effects, John, in states beyond Alabama. I had a discussion with Kim uh, a long time ago. About the, the implication case, I, of the overthrow of Roe v. Wade. Yeah. And in I said, the next days. thing we're going to do is go after in vitro fertilization. Yeah. And Kim, I think, based on her own experience, uh, said they can't do that. It won't, won't happen. And I, I, it's not that I want to say I told you so, <laughs> but yeah. I told you so. Yeah. This yeah. is a big issue, and I think it will be a huge issue in the campaign of, uh, of 2024. Uh, women across this country who should control their own bodies. You have a 15-year-old daughter, and you don't want anybody telling your daughter what she can or cannot do exactly. with her body. And I would tell you that this is going to resonate with women and men like me across the nation. And as for in vitro fertilization, which has given people the opportunity to have children, to, to do exactly what the Republican Party says they're in favor of, pro-life. Well, I listened to Nikki Haley uh, yesterday uh, I've listened to her on a variety of broadcasts. But yesterday, she had to retreat from her position yeah. for saying in vitro fertilization, uh, uh, the uh, embryo is a life. Then she says, well, it's a life, but I'm in favor of in vitro fertilization. Well, I mean, in vitro fertilization after contradiction, sort yeah. of like her view on slavery. And <laughs> all I all I can say is, if that's what the Republican Party has to offer, we're in big trouble. But I want mm -hmm. to address this particularly to men and women who are trying to have children and who count on in vitro fertilization, uh, if you believe that you are entitled to control your own body, that you are entitled to use science uh, to create life, all I can say is you can't vote for Donald Trump. No. And you will you know. note that the Republican Party is, not only are they silent on Ukraine, they're silent on in vitro fertilization. Uh, the Republican Party understands the paradox here. And I must tell you, I listened to Nikki Haley carefully. I knew that her son was conceived by in vitro, but it turns out her daughter was conceived by in vitro as well. How can a person who now is the beneficiary of two stars in her life, her children, mm -hmm. how can she not say definitively that this was absolutely wrong and that women should have the right? Well, the reason is because she's caught on the horns of a great dilemma. The Republican Party has become the so-called pro-life party. And I want to remind people that when George W. Bush was president of the United States and the question came up about using various lines of stem cell research in order to solve problems like Parkinson's and other issues, mm -hmm. that he waffled on that. He said, well, you can only use one particular stream. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I remember uh, that. And for the Republican Party to stand on this, uh, plus Ukraine, and we can go down the list of issues, I hope will ensure not only the defeat of uh, Donald Trump, but the defeat of the Republicans in the House and in the Senate. I Do you think so. that Republicans were caught unawares by this whole IVF thing? Because yesterday I'm seeing all these stories about, oh, Republicans are waffling. Republicans yeah. are scrambling. They don't know they what probably, to say. They're, yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of Republicans that have used IVF to just like Nikki Haley to have children. And then all of a sudden now that's out there. And now they're going to have to explain why it was okay for them, but not okay for anybody else now. Kim, and I address this to you with greatest respect and love. When you and I had this discussion, which we did privately, uh, you were convinced this would not be an issue. And you can correct me if I'm misstating it. And I said to you at the time, the overthrow of Roe v. Wade opens the door for all of this kind of stuff. And that's precisely what's happened. And this tragedy for American women this tragedy for American men, this tragedy for American families should resonate across the board. And you know what, what I have learned in all of this, Kim, because I've been talking to a lot of people about this. 
Most people don't realize how important in vitro fertilization has been to young women who want to start families. Mm -hmm. They simply were not aware of it. Most teenagers are told, well, if you have sex, you know, you get pregnant, you're going to be in trouble. Remember that expression? Yeah, exactly. Well, now getting pregnant for whatever reason for many women is much more difficult. And by the way, that involves men as well. Uh, to boost their ability in terms of their sperm is something now that is part of medical science as well. So it's men and women equally. Well, yeah, but, but you're also forgetting, John, that a lot of women freeze their eggs because they want mm -hmm. to pursue a career. They want to delay having children. So they want the best eggs that they can have when they're younger. So now all of a sudden women will be forced once again, if they want to have children and can't get access to in vitro fertilization, to start having children younger, which we know the consequences, the economic consequences of a pregnancy. I'm not saying it's a negative, but a pregnancy does not lay equally on a man and a woman. A woman gets pregnant. She has a physical, not disability, but she is physically impacted by the pregnancy and that can stunt her career. And I just feel like there is some political aspect of wanting women barefoot and in the friggin' kitchen yep. versus out in the career world. Well, you forgot the whole line. Barefoot, <laughs> pregnant, and in the kitchen. Let, let's, <laughs> let's do it right. Uh, uh, I, I can only tell you I am glad I live in a world in which women can overcome all of these handicaps. Had I been a woman in previous generations, I would have been in the forefront of battling for equal rights. Uh, and uh, that includes voting rights. You know, we talk about voting rights as an issue in this campaign. Uh, you understand that the Republican Party, by and large, opposed the right of a woman to vote. Mm. Uh, I have all the manuals from the election of 1912. It was the Democrats and the progressives who said, give the woman the right to vote. So my, my, my sense of this is that the Republican Party, tragically, is returning to its roots in so many ways, yeah. uh, opposing foreign aid, opposing standing for freedom, opposing the right of a woman to control her own body, uh, the controlling, if you will, or defaming or de denying a woman a right uh, to uh, be able to reproduce. That's what science is for. It's that kind of an advance. And so it was interesting. I listened to uh, some Republican politician. I think it was Tommy Tuberville, a senator from uh, Alabama, mm. who remarked about the fact that he supported the Supreme Court decision, but he wanted Alabamans to produce more children. Okay. <laughs> well, how what? do you produce more children uh, if you have a problem with fertility or exactly. you have problems, uh, as you have pointed out, in terms of employment? Look, uh, when I was uh, in my teenage years, and I'm not doing this to reflect on your daughter, uh, <laughs> it, please understand, it, I had friends who got pregnant when they were 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, oh, yeah. whose lives were completely changed. Mm -hmm. When the right of a woman to have an abortion was established, then were able to blossom and grow in their careers. It didn't mean that they didn't value life. Quite the contrary. They wanted life in a way that would be, be life for them and life for an unborn child. Yeah. But may I make one other comment? Mm -hmm. And that is to suggest that an embryo is a child unborn. Uh, and I've had this argument with many people. I don't know of a single embryo who has had a birth certificate issued on their behalf. Exactly. I don't know of a single embryo who you can deduct from your income tax return because it's a child. Uh, the, 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 it, this is all so contrary yeah. uh, to the way we think. But please note, and I want to emphasize this and underline it, not only are Republican leaders basically silent on this subject, they're silent on Ukraine, they're silent on the right of Americans to vote. Donald Trump is still making an issue about early voting, although it's interesting. The Republican National Committee is now going out and saying, you've got to register early and vote. Exactly. And, and Donald Trump is still against it. I mean, these are simple clues to what a second Trump term would mean. And I want to say one other thing. I've been monitoring all the news uh, channels and all of the various written things, and they're talking about the fact that Donald Trump is intending to engage Christian nationalists in his second administration. May I say that scares the living bejeebers out of them. Yep, exactly. I wanted to ask and, you a question about that because this yes. Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court is one of these 
Yeah. His, his name is Tom Parker. Not only did he sprinkle in his ruling the uh, the Bible throughout the thing, but he has also apparently been on QAnon talk show host kind of shows. And apparently he subscribes to this Manhattan, I don't know what's, what it's called, manifesto. Yes, uh, where... actually the author of that manifesto is somebody I've interviewed in the past. So this is a thing where um, evangelical Christians are supposed to work very hard to make sure that their beliefs are sprinkled throughout our politics, our daily life, what have you, right? Not, so, not sprinkled through, enshrined in. Okay. Yeah. These are people who believe that, and you saw it in the Chief Justice's opinion, I heard him interviewed on a program, uh, and you're right, the man, the man was completely violating the concept of separation of church and state. I've been urging people to read his ruling. His ruling is just a denial of that separation. Uh, and yet he is the chief justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, uh, which shouldn't surprise me in a way. Remember, Judge Moore, who ran for the Senate and who, like this judge, was to the right of Attila the Hun. So these are the realities we face politically. And let me say that the Republican Party now confronts a real dilemma. If Donald Trump is the nominee, if these Christian nationalists are encouraged within the Republican Party, if his daughter-in-law does, in fact, Laura Trump, does become the co-chairman of the Republican National Committee, yeah. then essentially what Donald Trump Jr. said on the ellipse on January 6th is true. The Republican Party has ceased to exist. Yeah. It is now the party of Donald Trump. And frankly, it is a cult. It is a dangerous expression. And it's not the expression of the Republican Party as I have known it or as the American people have known it. Can I ask you a question about the conservative uh, political committee, whatever thing happening this weekend, the C conference, CPAC. political action, uh, CPAC, it's yeah, CPAC. conference. Um, I want to play you a couple of clips. Sure. And again, I don't know. I'm not conservative, uh, so I would never go to something like this. Um, obviously, you're a historian of the Republican Party. Listen... Now, this is uh, Jack Posobiec. Uh, he's, listen to what he says. Steve Bannon is at the, the dais. He is, Jack is holding the microphone. Now, I try to find the entire clip. I hate playing clips like this because it's not the whole entire thing, but this is what he said. All right, welcome. Welcome. I just wanted to say look, welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> we're here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will we, we will endeavor to, oh, oh, to get rid oh. of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, right. here. Amen. I don't know what That's he's right, holding because up. All glory, all glory is not to government, all glory to God. Um, why I saw the whole clip. It's okay. disgusting. Right. May, I, may I express to your listeners, you, mm. many of you have known me now, for decades, uh, being on the radio, being in a, in a public position. I'm a Jew. Uh, I am a Jew who uh, is devout in my faith. I have worked in ecumenical work for years and years and years. I was the founder of the first interreligious dialogue between a Muslim, a Christian, and a Jew. I co-founded that with George Gross and Musa El Biali back in 1971. Uh, I have participated on so many levels in so many things. I was a member of the Catholic Youth Organization. Heck, I would have become the, the state chairman of the CYO, except the Monsignor pulled me aside and said he didn't think it was a good idea for a nice Jewish boy to be head of the CYO. Mm. Uh, I believe in ecumenism. I believe that there is value in each faith. Many of you know I wrote the article, the lead article in Inside the Vatican, entitled An Incomparable Pope. You can Google it. It's free. Uh, you, you get the extended version. So my, my record of working in the ecumenical world is real, but Christian nationalism scares the living bejeebers out of me. And the idea that these Christian nationalists would, even in a humorous way, and maybe he was Right, and that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, but I feel like there's truth in the humor, right? It's, that's how but it it's is. it's not funny. It's not. No, and so that, that's the key. And I don't think, he, it's a double entendre. He intended it to be funny, but not funny. No. And he is saying greater glory to God. Uh, which is fine, but not in a political sense. If you want a free country in which we have a multitude of faiths, a multitude of beliefs, where, where you can believe or not believe, mm -hmm. and yet still be treated equally, 
That's what's important. And my problem on the question of in vitro fertilization and the question of woman's right to choose is, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn what it says in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The exactly. Bible is open matter. to interpretation. Mm -hmm. What matters to me, and I say this very respectfully, if I had a 15-year-old daughter and somebody told that child that she could not control her own body, that if she got pregnant, she had to carry it to term. I mean, I'm thinking to myself, how horrific, completely contrary to the American principle of your right to control your own body. So yeah. this to me is a paramount importance in this election. It is a, a choice that we have not confronted in any election in American history. Mm -hmm. uh, never have we had a choice between a Christian nation and the American nation. We are the American nation, open and inclusive to all. By the way, that applies to immigration. If I hear Donald Trump say one more time, the poisoning of the bloodstream of America, uh, <laughs> it is to me, if there is a person out there who is Native American, you're the only one who legitimately can say that you are a true American. The rest of us are yep. all immigrants to this country. Yep. We all come from somewhere. Many of us came here, frankly, if there had been the kind of controls they want now, we'd never have gotten in. Uh, our grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-parents exactly. would never have gotten into this country. The strength of this country, the magnificence of this country, is that we are a nation of immigrants. And may I tell you, John F. Kennedy wrote a slim book, he didn't finish it because of his death, about the fact that this is a nation of immigrants, extolling the virtue of the fact that we are from all over. And the idea that Donald Trump could get away with saying the kinds of things he has said, uh, well, it's crazy. speaking as a Jew, just as a Jew, because I remember when people said, oh, you know, Jews are doing, or you could, if you're Italian, or if you're Irish, or if you're Hispanic, or if you're Asian. Do you remember the Chinese Exclusion Acts here in, in California, mm -hmm. the anti-Japanese sentiment? That's the kind of thing that Donald Trump has to be uh, uh, reminded of, and his voters have to be reminded that under the qualifications that Donald Trump has laid down, we have all infected the bloodstream of America. Thank oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Exactly. Well said. Well said, John. Okay, before I let you go, though, I want to take it a little bit uh, closer to home here in California. Mm -hmm. Of course, the U.S. Senate race, um, the primary is heating up. It's happening very soon. Uh, I just saw the latest Pew poll. It's now Schiff Porter Garvey. H I, I want you to look into your crystal ball. You think Garvey is going to be uh, in the general? All right. First of all, let me say I am opposed to the system we have now where it's a runoff between the top two. Okay. Uh, you'll have two Democrats, if it's Schiff and Porter. I expect Garvey, if the Republican Party hangs tough and votes as a block, to get in. And I hope Garvey does. Not because I don't like Porter or Schiff, but because I want a choice between a Democrat and a Republican. Mm. What you're going to get if it's Porter versus Schiff is Name the same calling. thing. Yeah. In the end, they're both Democrats. They're both going to vote down the line on, on these issues. Uh, so I'm I'm not concerned. But so you don't Garvey's, think there's a big difference between Schiff and Porter? No, I don't think so. I think substantively okay. their voting records are pretty much the same. It's a personality decision. Mm. Uh, and you can make the argument that, that Porter makes that she's less beholden to special interests. If you believe that, well, <laughs> I'd like to set you a bridge. Uh, I, I think that I think we in California made a fundamental mistake. You asked another question coming in. I do listen yes. very carefully to what you have to say uh, in advance. That's why I tune in early, because I like to hear the <laughs> answer between Tim and, uh, and Nikki. Uh, the question of whether uh, Gavin Newsom will be held yes. responsible for the major economic issues here in California. The answer is no, he won't. Uh, no one ever holds a governor responsible uh, for what happens. In the end, again, it is a question of personality. Let me also make the comment that this morning at the White House, you saw Kamala Harris front and center. She is becoming the spear carrier on so many of these issues uh, for Joe Biden. One of the reasons is to build her credibility. Yeah. Uh, and I will say to you, if you had an actuary table and you took a look at Trump and Biden, both 80 years old for all intents and purposes, uh, and uh, uh, their life expectancy would not carry them through another term in the White House. 
That means who we vote for for vice president uh, on the ticket is going to be critical. Kamala Harris is building up the idea that she is fully capable of being president, and she is. Uh, let me, I've known her for years. The first radio talk show she ever appeared on was my radio talk show. I still have a beautiful note. She wrote me in her own hand, uh, handwritten, uh, thanking me. She didn't have to thank me. I was happy to do it. Mm. She was dealing with the question of, of sex trafficking. And yes. this is before she held political office, before anybody thought about her holding political office. And she was out front on that. I've never forgotten it. And I have great regard for her. And I believe if she were president, the country would be in good hands. Now, the question is, who will Donald Trump choose as yeah. his running mate? Carrie Lake? God <laughs> forbid. Oh, oops, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said God. But you understand. <laughs> yeah. I, I want you to understand that that's bad. And, and Elise Stefanik, Elise Stefanik was asked if she had been in Mike Pence's shoes oh God, on I January know. 6th, what would she have done? She said she would have done whatever Donald Trump asked her to do. To me, it was the most appalling example. Constitution be damned, John. Yeah, and Constitution Tim be Scott, damned. Tim Scott, very likable fellow. His book is a rather enchanting story of his life epic. Tim Scott the same. The Republican Party must uh, get out from under the thumb of yeah. Donald Trump. I think that's absolutely essential. That's why tomorrow I will be watching with great care to see what happens in South Carolina. But March 5th is fast approaching. Yep. By the way, just so you know it, my birthday is March 2nd. Ah. Uh, I, I will tell you I'm going to be 75 years old. Oh, happy uh, early birthday to you. And But I'm going to be watching this because by the time my birthday is passed, we will know who the Republican nominee will be for president, unless, <laughs> unless the courts intervene. And Donald Trump deserves everything he's going to get. By the way, Nikki, I know you're always asking people to contribute to your program, <laughs> for Kim, and of course for Mark Thompson, and of course I'm completely in favor of all of this. Can you imagine if just a fraction right. of what Donald Trump is going to have to pay, north of $400 million, yeah. If you 1%. There you go. 1%. I'd be fine. Yeah. I mean, I heard that he might have to sell Mar-a-Lago, which I would just absolutely love. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but he has to pay these bills. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he does it. I don't know how many griffs, John, I don't, how many sneakers and cologne or steaks or whatever he needs to sell in order to, to stay afloat, but uh, it's going to be very interesting to watch. And now, I want you to do me a big favor. Hmm. I want you to tell your darling daughter <laughs> that... We send her warmest good wishes. I will. 15 years old is a milestone. I, I heard know. you remark that teenagers like to stay in bed anyway, and you told yes. her not to emerge until after <laughs> your program. Yes. You tell her from me, please have an extra piece of cake. And <laughs> let me also say, Marley, don't forget to give your mother and your father especially big kisses today yes. because their love has produced you, which is one of the greatest miracles that one can ever have. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. I will definitely relay that message. And thank you for always coming on. I love seeing your face. I love your insight. Follow John around the political world with John Rothman. I've lost the banner, but it's around the political world with John. Oh, there it is. Hold on. Hold on. I want to put it up there. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Around the Political World with John Rothman. Find it anywhere you can find your podcast. It's it's short, doesn't take long, but you get so much information from it. Thank you again for coming on, and we'll talk next Have week. a wonderful... So wait, wait, I'm going to ask you one question. Yes. What kind of cake is Marley going to have? She wants, actually, root beer floats. So we're doing root beer floats. Although, I think Grandma's going to be bringing her a little bunt cake. So we'll see if that happens. But may that's I what she say, wants. May I say I am thrilled. And with that, let me toast... Aww. With a root beer to toast, <laughs> the birthday of 15. And just remember, next year, I it'll know. be sweet 16. And I'm not going to ask you whether she's been kissed, but I am going to say it's something to look forward to. I love Thanks it. Thanks so much. Thank you, John. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Again, Around the Political World with John Rothman. Check it out. Subscribe. Do all those fun things. And yeah, it's, um, I can't believe she's going to be 15 years old, Kim McAllister. <laughs> We're in such trouble. Like, this oh. is when... This is when things really heat up. I literally we got started driving. looking at driving. We got boyfriends driving. coming in. Mm -mm. We got first jobs coming in. I'm excited about that one. Get a job, kid. Get a job. <laughs> get a job. Get a job. Absolutely. Can I give some thank yous really quickly before oh, please, we go to please. headlines? Let's, I uh, love so thank many yous. of you guys are so generous. Let's start at the top. Steven started us off with a buck fifty super sticker. Thank you. Pamela with a five dollar super sticker. Thank, thank you, you thank you, thank you. Harry came in with a here's to birthdays and a five dollars. Thank what's you. Up, Harry. 
Come on, matching the donors with a twenty-five dollar donation. Come you guys on. are so generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Brian, eighteen years old, chutzpah always wakes me up. It's great to have John Rothman on the show, and nice. happy fifteenth birthday to Marley. Thanks, and then Brian. Mama of three boys. Good morning. Mama. As a middle-aged stay-at-home mom, I often feel invisible. Oh, thank you for oh. making me feel seen. I'm grateful to celebrate my birthday a day early with so many kind oh, souls. Oh, happy, happy birthday, Mama! Happy birthday to you and thank Yay. you so much for the ten dollar donation. You guys are so generous, and we really, really, really do appreciate each and every one of you. Um, okay, so remember, Kim, I had said mm. that I knew what I was going to get for a Friday food segment. One yeah. of our listeners had told me, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. They don't, I'm going to order it now when you do headlines. I think they're open now. They might not open until 10. So I'm trying to get it delivered. I was going to have my husband do it. My husband's home for my daughter's birthday today, but he's still working because he's the working man, you know? So he's out in the driveway taking meetings and everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he's going to be able to go get it for me. So I might have to order it through DoorDash, which I don't really want to do because it's no. not that much, but it looks so freaking good that I'm just going to have to do it. So I have to I'm say, I love that you do this thing. At least at KGO, you did this thing what? where every birthday, every ch one of your child's birthday, you took it off. Oh, yeah. No, if I wasn't and working, I, I mean, at home, I would not be working today in San yeah. Francisco. There's no freaking mm -hmm. way. No. And so I thought, oh, she takes her kids' birthdays off? Yes. Huh. Maybe I should take my kids' birthdays <laughs> off. And I started doing the same thing. Yes. Yeah. You need to do it. It's, yeah. it's one of those days where, you know what it is. It's, well, if it's, obviously, if it's on the weekend, I don't take it off if I'm not yeah. working weekends. Yeah. But I want to be there to wish them, because I would work yeah. mornings, to wish them. How, I am not sending yeah. My kid off to school, a kid that came out of my body <laughs> <laughs> off to school without giving them birthday loves. Mm -hmm. And my son's birthday is usually the last day of school. Yeah. So that's also just another reason. to. What's his birthday? Is it, is it June, June 6th? June 9th. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's usually the last day of school. And then Marley's is, yeah, it's just you have to celebrate these days. And it's my birthday space mm -hmm. day so i should yes. get it off too i mean some of them all yeah. right um okay so i'm gonna try to order the thing i have a bunch of stuff that i want to talk about um oh i want to talk about birthday parties we have to get into that i have a couple of food stories to discuss and then we are going to get into whether or not landlords should be forced to have pets inside the rental homes that they're renting out is that fair you guys tell me because as someone who has a dog i would be very hard pressed you know, if to, if if the landlord of the house or the apartment that I wanted to rent said no dogs, well then no me, right? Mm -hmm. And so does that make a housing issue for people? It's like, wait a minute, the the pet, the cat, the dog, whatever, it's part of my family. I'm not going to send it to a shelter or give it to somebody else. It's my pet. So should it be considered just like another family member? It's not like a landlord can say no kids. And I know so many people consider their pets their children. On the other hand. I'm going to show my bias and don't come at me, cat people. I do feel like cats <laughs> just because of the whole. I'm not saying the dogs aren't destructive, but sometimes like cats, you know, with the litter. I don't know. I just feel like cats are way more hard mm. to keep track of. And have a Jacob mean. and you'll see destructive. I mean, yeah, kid, still so, writing on walls. True. Like What's worse, pets or kids? <laughs> I'm telling you, like my kid rivals any creature you could have in your house. There you go. So you guys let me know in the comments. We'll get to that in the second part of our show. Also in the second part of our show, we will talk to Tim Sika and talk about all the things streaming. I'll give him my review of the Bob Marley movie. We discussed that last Friday. Click the thumbs up button. Show your support for the show. Thank you to everybody that's been throwing us super stickers and the such. And here's some headlines. Now from around the world to up your street the nikki maduro show presents new czar kim McAllister. well let's start with alexei navalny uh of course he passed away uh recently in a russian prison more u.s sanctions are now being placed on russia in response to the death of this opposition leader President Biden announced more than 500 sanctions targeting individuals connected to Navalny's imprisonment and his death. The sanctions come one day before the two-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Can you believe it's been two years since Russia went into Ukraine? It's just, it seems like two years is an awfully long time. 
Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is vowing to stay in the presidential race, regardless of the outcome of tomorrow's GOP primary in her home state. Haley is trailing former President Trump by as much as 35 points in polls of South Carolina Republican voters. Polls are open tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll see how that all works out. Uh, The whole AT&T outage yesterday, remember that? Well, uh, it does look like uh, AT&T is saying it was a software update that was the cause of the cell phone outage that affected thousands of customers. The service disruption started early Thursday, was resolved last night. Federal agencies joined an investigation of a possible cyber attack on this, but foul play was ruled out. Just a software update, allegedly. Former President Trump wants his classified documents case thrown out. He says presidential immunity. Mm -hmm. His attorneys filed court papers last night in the federal case that surrounds documents found at Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach. You know, the one stacked up in the potty. That one. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) His lawyers claim he is immune from prosecution on 32 of the 40 charges because of his alleged decision to designate records as personal under the Presidential Records Act and to cause the records to be moved from the White House to his Palm Beach home. Trump has pleaded not guilty in this case. The trial is scheduled to begin in May, though it's unclear whether that will happen due to other cases pending against Donald Trump. He's the revolving door of the courthouses yeah. across the country. Yes. It's crazy. In San Francisco, Mayor London Breed's bid for re-election could be in a little bit of trouble. A new poll commissioned by the San Francisco Chronicle found the former mayor, Mark Farrell, leads with 20% of likely voters ranking him as their first choice or leaning that way. Mayor Breed comes in second at 18%. So that's 20 to 18%. Followed by Levi Strauss heir Daniel Lurie and supervisor Asha Safai. However, Safai. 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 Sorry, Safai. (laughs) However, nearly 40% of respondents say they are undecided. So that's a lot of people still yet to make up their mind on this one. The poll also suggests Mayor Breed may struggle under the city's ranked choice voting system after receiving fewer second choice votes than either Farrell or Lurie. Uh-oh. <sighs> That's going to be an interesting race to watch. Mm-hmm. That's re- You know, I feel like the number of undecided is because people are, might be, might be waiting to see kind of what progress or lack thereof there is. So um, I don't know. I think San Francisco and Oakland's mayors are in deep doo-doo. So mm, we'll see. Both. Mm-hmm. Both. Absolutely. And is it their fault or is it just the way that the world is right now with crime? I mean, when I mean, we talk about fault, Kim, of course it's not their fault that people are a-holes and are robbing stores. Um, mm-hmm. I do think that we also, I do think that we seem to forget COVID very quickly and what that did to people's psyche and and the, the mass exodus of people out and then the people that were left and kind of the mental state of people of, screw it, I'm getting mine, even if it's not mine type of mentality. On the other hand, you know, Specifically with Shangtown, you guys know that I'm just really critical of her and her decision to not have a permanent police chief this long. Uh, I just feel like there are steps that could have been taken sooner. Uh, mm-hmm. More, I don't know. I, it's not like rhetoric is going to stop a thief, but you know, rhetoric does give some people the belief that they could do whatever the hell they want to as well. So mm-hmm. it's a balance that I don't think either has been very successful at, and that's what they need to fix quickly. Yeah talk about contraception for a little bit. Let's do. Let's do it. California doubling down on emergency contraception access for minors. The Newsom administration is reminding pharmacists, major drug companies, and health plans in the state that current California law requires them to provide access with or without parental consent. Governor Gavin Newsom says they're making sure healthcare providers are following this law and that Californians know their rights. A recent report from UCLA finds only 50% of pharmacies surveyed allow over-the-counter emergency contraception to minors. Attorney General Rob Bonta says it's a clear violation of state law. The Mm -hmm. administration is also issuing a consumer alert informing minors of their rights. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I had to cough. Okay. Um, The software company, you know that software company, NVIDIA? Yes, they're having a yeah. good week, I think, they're right? A really good week. <laughs> they could become the third U.S. business to reach a value of $2 trillion. Oh We're not my talking a measly God. $1 trillion. We're talking 2 trillion. 
Yeah. Two That's trillion crazy. dollars. That is crazy. That's just too much money, in my opinion. I- I'm if, just saying it's too much money. If NVIDIA reaches that mark by the end of today's market close, it would shatter the record for the fewest number of trading days to earn its second trillion. It means NVIDIA would have accomplished the feat in 175 trading days compared to 516 trading days for Apple and 543 for Microsoft. They'll mm. do it in 175. Wow. Because that it's AI, right? I yeah. mean, they're a big AI company as well. I mean, and the, the thing is, is sometimes I feel like not that AI is going away, but do you ever feel like there's an overinvestment and overvaluation of certain things and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. it'll pull back into reality and how people like to use things? And so just be a little bit careful about it. We'll see. We'll see. The moon landing yesterday. That's pretty mm. cool. It's Odysseus, the first moon landing since 1972. Yeah, that's really cool. Houston-based Intuitive Machines, a private company, guided its Odysseus lander onto the moon yesterday. The lander will collect data needed by NASA, which is planning to land near the moon's south pole later this decade. It marks the first touchdown by a U.S.-built spacecraft since the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. That's cool. The CEO of Intuitive Machines praised the team's outstanding effort at landing the spacecraft. After the landing, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson congratulated Intuitive Machines, saying the feat is a giant leap forward for all of humanity. Odysseus is expected to spend roughly a week gathering data before it loses power. This is a special program that NASA has put on with private companies to see where they're working with private companies to see uh, who can land successfully. And there was another attempt recently where a company had a problem and they had to scrub their whole their whole mission. Wow. Yeah. So we have one fail, we have one success. And I don't know how many more companies are in this program. Right. We'll see what happens. Nice. Uh what was I also going to tell you? Uh oh. <laughs> I need to tell you about this story All because right. Sam Watterson, you know Law and Order? You ever watch Law and Order? Oh yeah, is he like the skinny old guy? He is the old guy. As a matter of fact, he's been on the show a really long time since 1994. I think I have a picture. Um, wow. He argued his <laughs> last case. Time. I know it is a long time. You imagine having a job that long, especially on television. He must be a man. Okay, go ahead. Waterston. I thought I had a picture already in there. Sam Waterston. Is that Sam his name? Waterston? Yeah. He has argued his last yeah. case on eyebrows TV. guy. Eyebrows guy. Totally eyebrows guy. <laughs> He's been playing Manhattan District Attorney Jack McCoy on the series since 1994. He prosecuted his last case last night in season 23. In the episode, McCoy resigns after prosecuting a powerful billionaire who's found guilty of murder. 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 Actor Tony Goldwyn of Scandal will take over as the DA later this season. Law and Order airs Thursdays on NBC, streams Fridays on Peacock. And it's the end of an era that you can't just flip on Law and Order and see Jack McCoy on the TV anymore. 19 seasons. Mm-hmm. 19 seasons he's been on the show. That's that's a very, very, very long time to have a job. Um, hold on. let's. Th- this is eyebrows, dude, right here. There he is. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some nice eyebrows. Nobody <laughs> ever waxed them nice. for him. <laughs> they are some nice eyebrows. <laughs> It's I'm not just, a law and order know, watcher. I mean, sometimes I'll watch an episode here and there, but I'm not. I know people. We've worked with people that are obsessed with that show, um, but not me. I well it, before streaming, uh-huh. you know, before it was like the water cooler show, right? Well, it's like one of these shows that was always on because it's been on so long that it's always in reruns everywhere in syndication. Yeah. So it didn't matter what channel you turned on, Law and Order was on somewhere. Yeah, right. That's true. That's very very true. Lastly, Uh, let's talk about Dolly. Oh, I love Dolly. I love Dolly, too. In a true Dolly fashion, Dolly Parton is congratulating Beyonce on her number one country hit. The Queen of Country posting a message on Instagram yesterday saying she's a really big fan of Beyonce and very excited that she's done a country album. Dolly wrote, congratulations on your Billboard Hot Country number one single, 
saying, can't wait to hear the full album. Beyonce's new Texas Hold'em debuted at number one on Billboard's Hot Country chart this week, and her new album, Act Two, is set to arrive March 29th. Have you heard the Texas Hold'em song? I haven't. Is it good? It is so good. And I'm not a big country music fan. I mean, it's not that I dislike country. I just don't listen to it. I, I, I don't yeah. turn on country channels. It's just not one of those things that I do. But I obviously, Beyonce comes out with an album. You listen to him. That Texas Hold'em song is catchy. And it's fun. And again, she's from Houston, Texas. So anybody yeah. that's like, why is Beyonce? Stop. And Dolly Parton shows you how it's done. Yeah. With class with inclusivity Mm -hmm. and she's badass and nobody should come for Dolly. Nobody will come for Dolly and just let music be music. People, nobody owns music class and inclusivity. She didn't have to do that, but she came out and reached her hand out and said, congratulations to you. Welcome aboard. Love it. Exactly. Yeah. This show is crowdfunded, which means we do rely on you to help us keep this whole ship rolling. Uh, <laughs> find us at thenickymadoroshow.com. Thenickymadoroshow.com is where all the links are to the PayPal and the Patreon and the merchandise and yeah. all that stuff. Thenickymadoroshow.com. I'm Kim McAllister on The Nikki Maduro Show. There you go. And thank you to everybody that's donated today. And this mm-hmm. just came in from Angel in the Bay Area. 1,500 Ooh, wow. bites for your birthday and many more. Thank so you nice. for the $15. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is my daughter's birthday. She's 15 years old. Uh, it's an amazing journey being a parent of a teenager, isn't it, Kim? Uh, and I love it. I love my kids. I love both of them. I love every single uh, kind of step that they take. But what I always say to my my daughter, I don't say this to my son. I only say this to my daughter is every new stage of life you are in. I am in. Mm-hmm. I have never been the mother of a 15 year old girl ever. Mm-hmm. I will never be. I will obviously be a mother of a 15 year old son that will be semi new. But going through this phase and dealing with the teen years, my daughter is walking me through it as well. Both me and my husband. So it's one of those things where I try to remember to stay calm. So it begins, all those sorts of things. But she's sleeping as teenagers do. I told her not to leave her bedroom until after I get off air. But we do have plans. She's going to have friends over for her for her birthday. Not a lot. It's going to be like, I think she's having three friends over. Two of them will spend the night because the other one's a boy. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not happening. And not Uh, at 15. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, And we're going to, and they want to have, they want to have Wingstop. Mm -hmm. Uh, They have. My husband. Oh, send me the picture, please. Oh, do I have it? The cake picture. My husband's home for her birthday. Huh? Okay. So he's going to send me the picture. I, I'm just going to let you know. I do not approve of this quote unquote cake. I do not approve. I do not. Don't at me. Uh, it's disgusting. It's terrible for her. Uh, it's Uh-oh. um, it's bad all around, but it's cute. It's it's full of things you should never put in your body ever. Um, And the only reason she's what is getting it, like it a fried Twinkie cake. It's worse. It's oh. so bad. It's so cute, though. It looks really good. My husband, I'm very proud of my husband. I have post, I have patted him on the back. It looks very good. It's exactly what my daughter wanted. I hate it. I don't want her to ingest any of it. Uh, but it's her. It's her birthday. So when he sends that, I'll put, I'll put it up there. Um, but there's this mom that's gone viral because she does not believe in celebrating yearly birthdays. I'm going to play you the TikTok oh, then we'll video. Take the balloons away for her. Yeah, there we go. So she does not believe in celebrating these birthdays. Here is her TikTok. Let's see here. No circumstances will I be throwing my daughter a birthday party every single year. Here's the deal. She is getting a first birthday party. She is getting a sweet 16 and she is getting a graduation party. Other than that, she is not getting any more birthday parties. Now, I have been to many a children's birthday parties, whether they were three, whether they were seven, whether they were 12. Whether it be family, whether it be friends, and I'm sorry, but as someone who did not have a kid at the time, they were not enjoyable. And I don't even think the kid noticed that I was there. I am not going to force that on my friends and family. Now, look, if you are someone who genuinely enjoys throwing your child a birthday party, pop off, queen. Do what you want to do. I'm not telling anyone else how to live their lives. I just personally don't find it necessary and I'm not going to be doing it. My daughter will be loved and celebrated on her birthday every single year. It just won't be in that way. Hmm. We are moving on to a family compound with my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister-in-law, my two nephews, one on the way. 
and we will have a dinner and cake with them every single year well, to something. celebrate my daughter's birthday. And every year on her birthday, we are going to do a Daisy Day or an All About You Day. We are going to make her a special breakfast. We are going to talk to her beforehand and figure out what she wants to do with her day. When siblings come, we're going to allow her to choose whether she wants someone to watch them or whether she wants them to come and participate in whatever activity we're doing. Princess dress up, trampoline park, etc. We are then going to go shopping. She's going to get to pick out a couple of toys. She's going to get to pick out so a there's toys. Outfits, whatever she wants to buy. She's then going to choose where she wants to have dinner and we will go out and have a nice celebratory one-on-one -on -one dinner with her where she can just have our full undivided attention. Mm -hmm. And I feel that that's just so much more fun and so much more genuine and a much better way personally to spend time with her and celebrate her on her birthday. Now, let's say she gets to the age where she starts making some friends. She's being invited to some birthday parties that she's going to. And she wants to have a birthday party of her own. She is going to get the choice between a Daisy Day or a birthday party. You can have a nice birthday party and invite all of your friends and we will go all out or we can continue and you can have a Daisy Day and she gets to choose between the two. She'll still get a present for her birthday, just something that we pick out instead of going shopping and she'll have a party or she'll get to do her whole day of activities and shopping and dinner that she gets to do every year. What would you choose if you were a teenager? I mean, I think at some point my Daisy Day with my parents, um, while it sounds nice in the beginning, I think, I just, okay, I want to have a party with my friends. I just don't like that lady. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes you see someone's personality and you're like, oh, I'd really click with them. Or yeah, you know, like, what, we're she not starts talking and she gets this wide-eyed thing going on. And I just feel like I don't like you. <laughs> I She's like, I'm in control here. Here's what we're doing. And here's what you're having. Exactly. And you will have this or you will have this. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. God, too many rules. Too exactly. much going on like, with you. You can have this or you can have that. You can hang out with us and we'll take you shopping. I mean, at least she gets gifts and everything like that. But at some point, the novelty of a daisy. And it should be a daisy day. I was telling you this yesterday when I was telling you we were going to do this topic. This mom is assuming, and, I, and I'm not saying she's not celebrating her daughter's birthday, but to not have yearly birthdays, I am a huge proponent of every birthday should be a big birthday because yeah. you don't know when it's going to be your last. Yeah. You just don't. And, yeah. and, and don't take life for granted. Don't take any of it. And so I am all for, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, celebrate your birthday. Now, I did tell my daughter, it's 15. You can have a small slumber party. We're not going all out. Because you remember, you guys, last year, I took, my daughter had a very hard year the year before with yeah. her diagnosis. So I took her to Magic Mountain with a bunch of her friends. Yeah. That was a huge birthday. Uh, <clears> this <throat> one, I'm like, we're going a couple friends over it's a slumber not, party. It's not always a matter of being a big expenditure. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But just because this woman went to a birthday party before she had kids and didn't enjoy herself. They're not for you then don't go to the birthday party exactly. if you don't want to go. But that doesn't mean that your kids shouldn't be. And let me tell you, the one time you say, well, well, you're not going to, we don't do birthday parties here. Right. Then you know what the kid you wants for the rest of her, their life? The birthday party. Exactly. Exactly. In addition, I'm telling you, and this might be wrong, but it's sometimes the way it is. When your child makes friends at school, there's a birthday list yeah. and if you're invited if you invited so and so to your birthday you end up on their birthday list exactly. so the fact that she never has a party is that going to be mean that she's never invited to anyone invited? else's well that Maybe. does slowly happen especially mm -hmm. as you get older you start realizing and with social media you know when people have birthday parties and you're not invited or your kid's not invited right. and then all of a sudden it's like well so and so didn't invite you to theirs why do we have yeah. to invite them to yours right. that's and then that's kind of a fair even though it sounds kind of snarky it's a fair thing it's one uh, of these things that happens. I just feel like she's, I, yeah, I, you know, and I agree with Stephen who wrote, I, um, oh no, he wrote something else. He said, just, just let people do what they're going to do. Exactly. There it is. I mean, Ridiculous. Just let her do what she wants to do. Like, why do you day. have all these rules about, you know, and again, as you say, you don't have to spend a bunch of money on a birthday party. It's not that big of a thing. I mean, I'm glad our kids are going to be celebrated, but she just seems like, as someone yeah. mentioned here, a total Karen. Yeah, it's total Karen. Yeah. And Brian's is a birthday is a celebration day of life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, it's as if she wants to take a traditional, culturally 
traditional way of celebrating. It's your birthday. You usually have a party and being like, mm-hmm. no, we're not going to do that year because what? What is the negative of doing that? Yeah. Um, okay. Are you ready to see the cake? The, it, please, this, please, please. This is a cake and Because we celebrate it, over here at the Nicki Maduro me. show. Do not judge me. <laughs> judge my husband. Uh, you're getting judged. Okay, here. This is a cake. It is all the candy, all the all the hot Fritos, monster cans, the energy drinks, monsters, oh, no. and Slim Jims. Where's Thank the cake you. cake? Is there a cake underneath? That, there the... is no cake cake. Oh, this is like a junk food cake <laughs> er, cake ish setup. It is designed. It's <laughs> there's monsters. I, I I how many monsters? He's ignoring me now. He's probably offended. See, I have I, I have no problem with the stuff. I have a problem with the monsters. I that's where I have the, the problem with it. So I'm at the grocery store yesterday picking up all the nonsense junk food mm-hmm. part. And then I get this list of, oh, I want a monster cake. She saw it on social media. She's like, I want a monster mm-hmm. cake. Now she's not gonna drink all these. These are for the friends that are coming over yeah. as well, which I hope her parents don't care because they're getting it apparently. Um, but yeah, I don't like energy drinks. I don't Mm-mm. drink energy drinks. I don't think that you should drink energy drinks. Way too much caffeine is absolutely correct. Especially for um, kids. Especially for kids. <clears throat> and so again and they're gonna be nuts at your house <laughs> fyi <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> you throw some sugar uh, and some caffeine at those kids and they're gonna be like Ooh! yeah heather's like that's awesome i'm gonna tell my boyfriend to do that for my birthday but with wine yeah it's too <laughs> much uh mom does not approve again but kind of like this mother it's one of those things where it's a day it's terrible it's not mm-hmm. gonna kill her uh but at the same time with all the junk sh- food, all that sugar, it's just gross. And then she shows me, she's like, these are the z- zero sugar ones, mom. Yeah. Oh. No. That, that's, what about that's the a caffeine? Myth, exactly. No. Well, the, the caffeine is already a concern. But then it's like, but it's it's zero sugar. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. My husband tries. My husband's a big energy drink person. That's that's where what that's where she's getting her bad influence. Uh, I stopped drinking. I stopped drinking energy drinks years ago. It's a midnight party for stoners. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter's not a stoner, but I hear you. It sounds like a pretty good time that I'm going to be apparently awake for tonight. So, yes, that is the quote. No, she doesn't want a cake. She wants a root beer float. That's what she wants for her birthday. So, uh, James said, she'll be fine. I grew up drinking a couple of Cokes, super big gulps a day, and I turned out pretty good. Dude, I used to drink a Jolt. Remember Jolt back oh, in the day? God. Um, I used to drink yeah. that. I used to drink Mountain Dew. I'm not acting like it's just gross, in my opinion. Yeah. But it's a birthday, and so whatever, whatever. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. So, um, yeah, it's it's great. I just don't think that kids need caffeine. I'm like, you're a child. No. Like, you should have energy naturally. Now, I don't drink energy drinks anymore, but I at least could explain why I'm exhausted. <laughs> You know, I'm like, I'm busy. I'm a mom. I'm just uncomfortable with it. Like, I don't know how it affects them. And I've read it's stuff caffeine. that's it's not It's caffeine. Good for them. Yes, Julia it's too likes much those yerba caffeine. mates. Have you heard of well, yerba mates? I've heard of it. Is that caffeinated too? Eh, it's some type of energy situation. Right. I'm like, situation. no, I don't think so. There's an energy situation going on. <laughs> There's a freaking dog by my feet. Come on, dog. Yeah. So, uh, and now let's see. Limit the drinks. If filled with caffeine, this is dangerous. You better check with other parents about the caffeine. Yeah, I will. Uh, believe me, these kids, the kids that are coming over to my house drink monsters in front of their kids. I wouldn't have like some newbie over right. to my house. But again, I will be limiting how much they're drinking. Absolutely. Um, there's no Funyuns in that cake. How can it be a party? Uh, I agree. I love Funyuns. Do you like, a, are you a Funyun eater, Kim? They no. make your Beth breath rank, oh. but... It's a, it's fried supposed onion. I don't even think there's any real onion in it. John, is there real onion in Funyuns? I don't think so. But they are good. It's just, I'm, I understand that kids will survive. I love all the comments. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. And they will. It's not like anybody's going to die from this. But I don't like it. I don't like yeah. it. I don't buy my children energy drinks. I don't think they need energy drinks. It's gross. Now, there are some people who say, yeah, but you'll let them eat Taco Bell. <laughs> I was like. I don't feel like Taco Bell is that bad. I think that be- they eat beans and tortilla all the time. That's really all they eat at Taco Bell, and that's fun. Um, I don't know what a Funyun is. You don't know what a Funyun is, Vicky? Oh, Nikki. Vicky. Hold Funyuns. on. Hold on. Exactly. Oh, yeah. We're both getting it. it. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's like the best. <laughs> it's the best. I worst. thought it was a Michigan thing because my husband likes Funyuns. Here we we don't have them here very often. They're, these yeah. are Funyuns. 
There you go. They're onion flavored rings. I don't yeah. even know if they're real onions in there. That's what I, I yeah, I don't know. I was going to look up the ingredients. I was trying to find. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Where's the ingredient? There it is. I want to see. Okay. Enriched cornmeal. And then everything in a parentheses. Vegetable oil. So I guess it just made it a corn. It's not even onion. Oh, no. onion powder is in there. MSG, hydrolyzed yeah. corn protein, <clears throat> dextrose, garlic powder, natural flavors, and gum. Arabic. Yeah. So uh, yeah. onion is not the first thing in there. They make it look like onion. It's just shaped like it. It's basically corn, which everything that we eat apparently nowadays is made. Onions are bomb, though. I will say. Um I love Doritos though. If you, I had the most, just to stay in our food category, I had the most unhealthy, so you know, healthy dinners the other night. So on Tuesday, we wanted, I didn't want tacos again. My son is obsessed with having tacos on Tuesday. And he looks at me, he's like, I don't want the taco shell. I just want basically tortilla chips, which is basically the same thing, right? He wants beans, meat, and then he wants to kind of scoop with tortilla chips. And I was like, okay. And I don't know if the old stoner in me came out, but I'm like, you know what I want instead of tortilla chips? I want Doritos. I made my myself, not the kids, like a pile. And I'm telling you, I was not stoned. Pile of Doritos, taco meat. And then we had leftover queso cheese dip from the weekend. And then jalapeno peppers on it. Oh, my God. It was so freaking bad for you. But so, so delicious. So, so uh, it was we good. <laughs> we, talk, we talked yesterday about how much I wanted to be pregnant, right? <laughs> Yes. Okay. So I'm at in Monterey, where I just uh -huh. re returned from. At Jacob's birthday dinner, we went to Benihana. He loves how they set things on fire, and you know it's very right. exciting for him. And we're seated at a table with this husband and wife and their two twins. They're like two years old twins. Okay. And she's very, very pregnant. And they're really nice people. And she ordered a Pepsi. Okay. And all I had to do was look look toward my husband with an eyebrow like this. <laughs> He's like, do you want that? He goes, don't don't judge, don't judge, <laughs> don't judge. She's pregnant. You're not supposed to judge people that are pregnant. Yes, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I full on judged her for ordering a caffeinated, sugary, chemical laden drink while pregnant. Uh, you didn't have any caffeine while you were pregnant. Absolutely not. Remember how much I wanted that baby? Like I was like I drink about... decaf, but I would have like a sip of something like that mm. had caffeine in it. But also my first pregnancy, and again, I did not drink a lot of caffeine. I yeah. I think I might have had maybe some decaf and like kind of like put a little bit of regular coffee into it. Yeah. But I worked my first pregnancy, the morning shift in Sacramento as a reporter. Oh, yeah. My rolled my fat pregnant ass out of bed <laughs> every morning at 3:30. Until my maternity leave. Yeah. So, yeah, I was dragging. But I remember my husband would come home. I did eat sugar, though. Maybe that's why my child has a sugar. Mm. I would, he would come home. And I've shared this. I had, I would have little boxes of the Halloween dots, like, scattered around me. Like, just You're so funny. <laughs> passed out on the couch. I, um, <laughs> I was so, like, reading about, oh, is caffeine good or bad for your, oh, your yeah, baby? Yeah, and so baby. I, I went. Uh, I believe nine months without chocolate, even. That's a big thing for me. Yeah, I'm not a big chocolate but, eater. So. But on the other hand, with Julia, my cravings were hot dogs. I mean, how gross is that? Mine was Talk cereal. Oh, cereal. I ate yeah. so much cereal. Yeah, it's uh, and now I don't eat any cereal. No. With not Julia, I wanted hot dogs. With Jacob, I wanted soup. Interest. It's so interesting when you're pregnant. Yeah. yeah, it's just crazy. But, you know, sometimes I do wonder, like, you know, did what I eat as a pregnant person matter? Yeah. What my kids eat now? Who knows? But it's funny to think yeah. about. Uh, speaking of Taco Bell, though, real quickly, because somebody sent me this article. I don't know why they're trying to make Kim, my beloved Taco Bell, uh, trying to elevate it. Stop elevating it. It's fine the way it is. There's a San, San Antonio <laughs> chef that's been selected to reimagine Taco Bell's iconic Crunch Wrap Supreme. Do you know what a Crunch Wrap Supreme is? Uh, is that where they take a Taco Supreme and they wrap it in another tortilla and fry it? Yeah. Well, it's not. I got it right. <laughs> it's not fried. Oh. It's like pressed, you know, like toasted kind oh, of okay. like in that panini right. press or whatever. It's not yeah. deep fried. But yeah, okay. so like it has a hard shell and then it has. Uh, hold on. Let me, I think I have a cross section of it. It actually. It's pretty good. It's not one of my go-tos. I'll be completely honest. It's not. Um, 
So it has a hard shell. Stop this ad. Okay. So it has a hard ground beef, nacho cheese sauce, lettuce, tomato, sour cream, and then a crunchy tostada shell. And then it's wrapped in a soft tortilla. And then it's panini pressed so that it's toasted. Okay. Look, you don't need to reimagine that. That sounds delicious. Just leave it the hell alone. I don't know if they're going to, how they're going to elevate it, what they're going to do, but they've tapped this the chef by the last name of Dobertine. She was a semifinalist in the James Beard's Emerging Chef category. Whoa. So they are bringing some uh, some big names, apparently, to do it. <sighs> Leave it alone. You know what? Instead of hiring this hoity-toity chef, can you bring the bean burrito back down to under a dollar, right? I mean, can we just make Taco Bell cheap again? Can, make, can that be the slogan? Make Taco Bell cheap again. It is the most economic economical fast food, I will say, but it's getting up there. Uh, it used to be, you could buy all of Taco Bell for $5. Like you can mm -hmm. buy the whole entire menu <clears throat> for $5. Fast food um, is, is expensive now. Uh, Blue Spark says years ago, a friend's mom was a buyer for Taco Bell. They waited for everyone to get the better beef. Then they swooped in at the bottom of the barrel. Ew, Ew. I, don't, I, don't I don't care. You guys can gross me. I will still eat Taco Bell till the day I die. Mimi I writes, care. happy birthday, Marley. My birthday was Monday. <laughs> happy happy birthday, birthday, Mimi. As I will continue to celebrate, I will include a real root beer toast to you exactly exactly so exactly, nice exactly thank you for that thank I love, you thank i you, love thank our you. people here i we know i do i love it as yeah. well um okay so we have a few more minutes let's do let's well, let's do some headlines here because then i want to get into the rental thing and then no let's do the rental thing right here and then we'll do headlines and then we'll go to tim because okay. we're gonna run out of time i want some time Ooh, to tim discuss. Sika. yeah i want to discuss this with you guys so I almost there forgot it was Friday. I was so Marley's birthday up <laughs> that I forgot it's Friday. Isn't it awesome that her birthday falls on a Friday, though? Love I mean, it. is there any better day for her birthday to fall on than it's a Friday? It's awesome. I love it. Okay. Um, so there's a new bill before the California legislature, yeah. and it would make it easier for pet owners to rent housing. So this is by Matt Haney, who we know from Sacramento. Uh, it would prohibit landlords across the state from instituting blanket bans of common household pets. So it can't be your llama or your peacock or something, right? <laughs> Dog or cat, a domesticated animal. Haney said the measure should help address the state's housing crisis. He argued that building more housing won't solve that crisis if tenants who own pets, which are a lot of people, yeah. are denied a place to live because they own pets. Thoughts. Do you think, do you think that it should be forced on landlords no to allow pets inside their home absolutely not my house my decision i i agree with you like look, this is what i'm thinking of okay so they I mean, build I all this cat pee and urine and Thank dog you. pee trust me i have a dog in, like yeah i can't you tell you how, how many times i picked up dog poop off my living room carpet but oh, that's my choice yeah this is that's my your choice. house that's your house though um cat pee though when it gets into the carpet Ew. and the padding of carpet you can't get it out you have to replace the entire carpet mm -hmm. now i will also argue as a landlord i do know this that if a tenant stays there long enough you're supposed to by law replace the carpet anyway mm -hmm. but sometimes kim the the it'll seep to, to through to the wood floor underneath yeah. all of it and then yeah. that is a huge thing now i'm not knocking cats dogs are just as destructive we had an old dog uh scratch the crap out of the back door uh, and that it, you'd have to replace the door. Like we just kind of sanded it and laminated it and all that kind of stuff, but it's not, it was never 100% fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandy says landlords should be able to say no kids because we were making the, the comparison. Kids are very destructive to homes. I would not be okay for a landlord to say we don't allow kids. So why not allow, you know, why are they allowed to say that to pets? Uh, Sandy says many adults would love the option of child-free living environment. I mean, and I don't know how old you are, Sandy, but obviously 55 and up senior facilities exist, right? So those they are child have free those area. 55 and up. Yeah, no you're kids. Not, you can have, I remember my dad lived in one when I was little. Okay. My parents were divorced and I would go visit. He was in the Southern California area and I would go visit and I would see the sign like 55 and older child yeah. free, whatever. And I'd be like, I'm not supposed to be here. He said, no, you can be here on the weekends. You can be here for a certain number of days. Yeah, but you can't live there. But you can't live there. I'm like, right. oh, okay. He, was, he wasn't there very long. I think it was a, just a stop for them while they waited for a house. But still, yeah. I remember as a kid being really offended by that. 
Well, and it is offensive <laughs> on one hand. On the other hand, if you're 55 yeah. and older and you're trying to, you know, live out your days yeah. and kind of with people at the same stage of life that you are, and then kids are thrown in. That totally changes the whole dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the animals, though. Vicky says pets are not kids. Um, true, but a lot of people feel a lot different. Gordon, cats are our fur babies. Judy, I'm a cat person. They are my children. Heather says, when I rented out my home, tenants' kids were far more destructive yeah. than pets. I'm telling um, you, I have one of those. I love are. him to death, but he is, this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. This is, because he'll wreck it. Kids and I, I know this, so I don't buy nice things anymore. Like, right. I not that I could, but I, I just don't like, I realize my couch is going to have marks all over it. I realize that whatever comes into this house, if I want it to keep it safe, then right. I have to pack it away for a while. Yeah. He's not quite done with that destructive phase yet. Well, he's only 10. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sandy says, by the time I was old enough to move out on my own, the law had changed. Now places are required to accept kids. It's mm -hmm. crazy to me that you can't find adults only rentals. Now I'm going to play devil's advocate for you, Sandy. What happens if you find an adult only rental? Let's just say that that can exist and not 55 and older, but just universally. Right. And then somebody is living there and then decides to have kids. They're, they're evicted. That creates a whole nother housing issue. Right. Because adults of a certain age, not all ages of a certain age often have kids. And so when you're tying their housing to that decision, that can become discriminatory mm -hmm. and, and leave them up a creek if they can't find something they can afford when they could afford it, if you would just allow kids to live there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the issue. Um, kids presumably don't pee on the floor. Lies, lies, <laughs> lies. They do. <laughs> uh, although I do, I get it. Um, Louise says, Oh my God, pets are a privilege, not a right. I know people who would like pets, but can't because their landlords don't allow it. Yeah. Are we just going to bitch when things aren't 100% to their liking? Mm. Uh, Lori makes a good point. There is a pet deposit. Uh, sometimes it's not enough to cover all the damage though, you know? So I paid a pet deposit for Nugget and Nugget, knock on wood, he's a very good boy. He has not done anything to this house. Um, knock on wood, knock on wood, knock on wood. Now he's going to go run and do something. Um, but he's a good dog. He doesn't scratch. He rings the bell if he needs to go out. Like he's a good dog. Not mm -hmm. everybody's dogs are like that. Um, Landlord turns around four months later and says, well, I'm selling the house. You have to leave. Ugh. Uh, Heather says, my former tenant's kids caused thousands of dollars in damage to my place. That mm. sucks. Yeah, it's hard. Um, but at the same time, dogs and cats are so common that you, you also limit what could be very good tenants in place for someone that, yeah, they might not have pets, but they might have kids or they themselves might be destructive. So but it should know. be a choice. You shouldn't it should be, be a forced choice. into it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I don't think that, I don't know mm -hmm. how it should be. Um, I, I don't know how you adapt to that. I think that honestly, it's going to come up to the landlord saying this person or this family, I really, really want my house. Okay. They have a dog. And you know what? I will also say limit the size or the number. Okay. You can have one dog of a of certain a, size of a certain size. Like maybe you don't want or whatever. My, you I know? have a big golden retriever. Maybe you don't want that dog. Or maybe you, know? you don't want, you know, you know, tiny barky dogs that might bother the neighbors if you live in an apartment complex, right. you know, mm -hmm. uh, it all, I think that there could be caveats and I feel like there's a compromise somewhere with it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, and Vicky makes a good point. Some homeless turn down shelter beds because they can't bring their dogs. They aren't entitled to have a yeah. dog. They can't afford it. And the poor dogs, I believe that this is true, that if you get assistance, you get extra money if you had, if you have a pet. Really? So that might also not saying that that's the only reason why they have a dog. If I was homeless, I'd want a pet. I'm just saying I'd be so lonely. Um, I wouldn't want to be out there on my own. They, they can alert me if someone's going to harm me. So I'm not saying, but I can understand why so many homeless people do have animals. But I also feel the other side, like how well is that animal being taken care of if a person can't even take care of themselves? And do they want to be out in the rain and the cold every single night? You know, so. Uh, Beth says my son actually ruined our custom front door by crashing into it while opening it. Kids, pets, and adults are destructive, but that's what landlords have to put up with. That's true. I mean, if you're renting out your home to strangers, uh, that becomes their house and they do with it as they do. And then you have to pay the consequence when they eventually you, move out. Do you think like a pet deposit, th there should be a kid deposit? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's I mean, interesting. and how much would it be? <laughs> Would it be more than the dog or the cat? 
Uh, It'd probably be like a month's rent at least. Like how much does it cost to replace that door, you know? Right. I mean, I would just say you have to fix it. Like, see, as a landlord and as somebody that rents, right? If yeah. I if things happen, like right. like things happen. Sometimes something falls over, it scratches something, it damages, but then you have to fix it. You can't call up your landlord and be like, right. oh, if you wrecked it, fix it. It's yeah. it's it's taking ownership and personal responsibility for something like that. If if your kid breaks a door in their room, mm -hmm. guess who needs to go to Home Depot and get a new door? Right. Not the landlord. In our case, it was uh, Jacob ruining the screens on the windows. Right. But those are, that's right? an easy fix. Like, you could fix that. No, I had to. They were torn and, like, shredded. I had to call the screen guy. He had to come. The mobile screen guy came and replaced all the screens on the whole house. Oh, sweetie. Replacing screens on screen windows is extremely easy. Next time that happens to you, let me it know. Was and really I'll show you how to do it. it was really expensive. It was like $2,000. Oh, my God. It was just the screen. It was the frame was fine. The. Uh... Just the screen. It was a screen. Yeah. Oh, screens. sweetie. That is the easiest, easiest, really? easiest fix ever. Oh. Yes. Uh, next time that happens, if he destroys <laughs> it again, it is a, a little wheel tool and just buying a screen. And if You're you very replace handy. it. You're handy. Well, I had dogs that like ran through. And I have a friend. I'm going to call it my friend April, who's like walked through screen doors before. <laughs> Um, it's so easy. I, and once you learn how to do it, you're going to be like, I'm never going to pay somebody else to do that ever again. Oh, wow. It's not okay. difficult at all all to do yeah. it um yeah yeah that's like oh that's easy yeah screens are not and, and that's really that mobile screen guy is making money hand over fist if he charged you two thousand dollars oh my god you got had never do that again never 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 do that again yeah. um yeah <laughs> even they scammed you Kim. sorry <laughs> uh but yeah exactly um okay uh i will go on down on record if i had to vote on this bill i'm gonna say no I'm going to say, no, you can't, you can't force landlords mm. to do this. And also, this is what also feeds into the, the mentality that California is this huge nanny state where, and they're, they're anti-business, they're anti-landlord. There are so many rules already for landlords. I mean, you saw it with COVID and I argued this till I was blue in the face. I understood why they wanted to have the eviction moratorium, but then you need to have a mortgage moratorium as well. You can't tell people yeah. they don't have to pay rent and then tell people that have mortgages on those rental homes that they have to still pay their mortgage. That's insane. And so we need to have balance and we need to understand that, yes, while people need to be housed, they don't own that housing. And yeah. as long as it's allowed for people to rent housing to contribute to the housing problem in California, then you need to have both sides done. Um, okay, let's do some headlines. Tim Seek is going to also join us in a little bit. And I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to give him my review, if he gets here early enough, of the Bob Marley movie. I had seen my friends yesterday, and they're because they obviously know that I'm a huge Bob Marley fan. My daughter is named Marley. Not too hard to figure out. Mm -hmm. And um, and they were like, oh, did you see it? And I said, yes. And they're like, oh, what did you think? I've been waiting for your review. And so I will share that with you as well. You know what else I did last night? Just on a side note, if nobody's ever done it before, for the first time last night, I went to a rage room. Has anyone done a rage room? No, but I've always wanted to. How it's... did it feel? Were you like, release <laughs> the inner Kraken? It, so, it was so much fun. Uh, one of my friends has been having a hard time lately. So we're like, you know what? Let's just get out some energy and frustration and we'll go to the rage room. It's fun. I will tell you, that's... Talking about the screen guy, the rage room, that is a hustle. Like, all you need is obviously the warehouse, right? So the rent, that's the huge expense. But, I mean, you could just go to the landfill. They charged. I mean, we didn't buy any of the extras because you could buy extra things to demolish. The room comes with certain things, and then you could buy extra. Isn't it Fifth stuff that's that's not ruined yet? Well, some of them, like, uh, it's a VCR. It's like an oh. air conditioning unit. Then they have a bunch of glass bottles that you could pick up. You could smash with all, like, bats, crowbars, whatever. Okay. Um, they have a bunch of different things. But they were charging, like, 15 bucks for a confetti cup. I'm like, no. You could buy a pinata. You know, you, you could, I'm like, this <clears throat> is a hustle. It, it mm -hmm. was genius. Absolutely genius. Did you have but to I, pay by the item of, like, you know, if how you wanted to add to the room. But they, if you, you know, you didn't have to pay per bottle you smashed. No, it comes with a certain number of oh, bottles. Okay. They're all over the mm -hmm. floor. And these are, t I'll tell you this though. There's tough bottles. Some of them like we kicked or <laughs> smashed and they stayed whole. We're like, you got to really smash those bottles. It was pretty cool. They was were it a good, workout? Uh, yeah. I mean, it got hot. There was yeah. four of us in the room and we wore the, uh, they have like overalls, you know, yeah. so you don't get stuff all over yourself and then you have to wear the shield and gloves and things like that. 
it's really, really fun. So if you've ever thought about doing it, it's it's a pretty good way to get out your frustration. So I highly, I highly recommend it. It was a good time for all. Wow. Absolutely. Um, okay, let's do some headlines. And then when we come back, Tim Sika should be with us and we'll talk about movies and streaming. And I'll give my review of the movie One Love. But here's the headlines. Oh, let's run up. Now from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro Show presents New Czar Kim McAllister. Yeah, we'll start here in South Carolina, where voters will head to the polls tomorrow for the state's Republican primary. The state's former governor, Nikki Haley, is polling well behind former President Donald Trump. Haley has vowed, though, to stay in the race as Trump's last serious Republican challenger. But Trump has maintained a double-digit lead, including one poll putting him up by 35 points. So not really a big uh, guess as to what's going to happen in South Carolina tomorrow. Don't you think if you lose in your home state that you, you know, she should not drop out, Kim, no, no dropping out. Nikki no. Haley stay no. in the race. <laughs> Don't please. drop out. Don't drop out. <laughs> Russia facing more than 500 new sanctions from the United States. This comes in response to the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny and Moscow's invasion of Ukraine as well. While speaking from the White House, President Biden said Vladimir Putin must pay a price for his aggression abroad and repression at home. President said Kyiv is standing and remains free nearly two years after Russian troops invaded the country. Exactly two years, as a matter of fact. This former FBI informant who was arrested last week for lying about President Biden and his son has now been taken right back into custody. Try to find pictures of him. It's very, very difficult. The only one I can find is where he's really hatted up and masked up. You can hardly see his, we can't see his face really. Um, But yeah, he's back into custody now. The uh, name is Alexander Smirnov. (laughs) He's accused of falsely iconic name. Iconic name. He's accused of falsely telling the FBI that both President Biden and his son Hunter received five million dollar bribes from Ukraine. Last week, he was charged with making false statements. On Thursday, a California judge decided Smirnov is a flight risk and ordered him to be rearrested. So he was rearrested yesterday. They let him out. He's back in. He was actually speaking with his lawyers when they came to rearrest him again. I guess makes sense. Uh, yeah, someone I mean, with international connections would be a flight risk. Yeah, I, I would know. say so. Exactly. Booze. Big old booze. booze. Look at that. Mm, there's a bill under consideration in the state legislature that would make it legal in California to order alcoholic beverages to go. Last year, Governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill that made it possible for people to consume alcohol on sidewalks and other designated public places, both in the city and county of San Francisco. If passed, the new bill would implement alcohol to go statewide. I thought it was legal during the pandemic and that we just continued it. But I guess we have to officially say right. across the state it's it's legal to or remember there were restaurants that would sell margarita pouches. Yes, I remember mm-hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, during the pandemic like here's exactly. a margarita to go enjoy. There you go. Exactly. We yeah. need our booze. We need our booze. <laughs> We can't have it here. It's all right. (laughs) SpaceX, you know, we've talked so much about the landing on the moon yesterday that SpaceX is getting left out of consideration. They are celebrating their 17th launch of the year. A rocket blasted off last night from Vandenberg Space Force Base, creating a fiery glow in the Southern California skies. It successfully deployed another 22 Starlink satellites to join the more than 5,000 orbiting the Earth. The company's network provides internet service to people around the world, especially in remote locations. Some Northern California Girl Scouts are riding high. After an out-of-this-world moment, they used a ham radio to make live contact with the International Space Station yesterday. The troop came up with the idea on their own. They spent months preparing for this. They had 10 minutes to ask astronauts questions, ranging from experiments that they're working on to how they spend their free time. After it was over, the girls received special merit badges. That's <laughs> really cool. Um, there's this There's this show on Apple TV that um, I started watching. It's called Constellation. 
Mm-hmm. And anyways, the, the only reason I'm, I'm mentioning it is they were looking for this capsule where an asteroid had landed and they couldn't, she had been off course. And so they're like, everybody get their ham radios out, notify everybody that you know with ham radios to find her. And uh, that's, and then I, the next day I hear this story and I was like, they really do use ham radios to do all of this <laughs> sort of stuff. So that is really, really cool. Uh, lastly, Google is putting its Gemini AI image generator Mm. on hold. Why? Well, because it produced what the company is calling very inaccurate historical images. Oh, interesting. Users complained about instances like Gemini returning requests for images of the founding fathers as people of color. Other images included a female Catholic Pope and black Vikings. The tech giant said it's working on improving the depictions immediately. Google added an updated version of the image generator to be released soon. I mean, maybe AI doesn't see race. Well, okay, you guys understand, like, AI is programmed by human beings. Like, it's not like it's this... It's not like it's coming down from the heavens here. There's people, there's human beings behind the programming into ai and then it learned right and then it learns from that so somebody at the very beginning of this whole thing i think had a maybe and again above my pay grade a bit of a sense of humor perhaps or programmed it to kind of look for unique interpretations of search results i have no idea but again ai can learn from the people that input it this is as much as i understand but somebody started it a human being started it so Mm -hmm. That's as much as I understand about that. Before we move on, let me just Mm -hmm. show you a picture of this. Because it is a bit disturbing to see an African person of African descent. Uh I don't know if they're American or not. uh, As a not returned as a picture uh, as a Nazi. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Like, that's obviously not right, you know. And so I can see why people are upset about that. All right. Oh, I see. I see. I mean, these don't even look real, though. Like Mm -mm. it doesn't, it doesn't seem to me like, okay. So the search was show me an image of a 1943 German soldier. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Now, if I was an AI program, I would say, okay, the German soldier has this uniform, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we're going to show all the options of what a person who lives in Germany could look like, perhaps. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's show um, different uh, ethnicities simply because we usually factor in ethnicities in in search results. I don't I can see how it can happen. None of those look real, though. I mean, except the top left one. Um, Yeah, they look more like renderings. But here's here's one that, that looks a little bit more real. All right. Just to I know we have to go to Tim, but here's another one that looks a little mm. more real. Yeah, that okay. does that that definitely looks way more real. Yeah, yeah. And so I can understand where they're like, ooh, this is not historically accurate. Let's pull it back. But if you're searching for this, are you confused about what a 1943 German soldier looked like? Well, maybe if you were a kid and you didn't know and you were writing a paper. Right. Right? I mean, Again, I don't know. That's why libraries are good. That's yeah. why books are good. No, you know what yeah. I mean? Like you gotta you gotta yeah. figure it out uh in a way that you can trust. <laughs> Yeah. Don't ask AI for everything. AI, you know, have fun with AI. Do it for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, if you want to start it out with some research and then do your own research, that's right. That's fine. It's like Google, right? You you could start with Google and then, you know. Not everything on the internet is true. Thank you. We learned that from day one. Yeah. I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Nikki Maduro <laughs> Show. Whoop, whoop. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. And again, <laughs> donate to our Patreon by going to the Nikki Maduro Show.com. But it is Friday, and we like to have fun on Fridays. And so let's welcome our friend Tim Sika to take a look at what we should stream and watch. Hello, Tim Sika. Hi, Nikki Maduro. Hey, Hi, Kim McAllister. Hey, here we All are. All right. So I <laughs> promised you my own review of the Bob yeah. Marley movie last time. Oh, was- yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, ooh, I sense something here. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so a huge Bob Marley fan. Huge, 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 huge Bob Marley fan. Um, right. I, okay, so one, I agree with you that the Jamaican dialect, the accent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, yeah. took my, I took my children and my in-laws and my husband, okay? Kids. Okay, yeah, you said you were going to take the family. Yeah. yeah, kids, my son did not understand much. He He couldn't, you know, decipher it. 
what do you th- what is your take on the fact that they assumed people would be able to understand everything that was being said. I was surprised that there weren't more sub. I understood every word, but I listened to Jamaican music and listened to the Jamaican accent for a very, Mm. very long time. So I had no Mm. problem, but I can imagine other people being like, what did they just say? You know, it's interesting. I, they're doing more and more of that in movies where, I mean, in this case, it's a it's a dialect that's that's difficult to understand. But in a lot of movies, they they do this like patois thing yeah. where somebody will be talking in English and, and then they'll switch to Spanish or they'll sp- switch to French and the Spanish and French won't be translated. Yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of think it's a kind of a good thing because it doesn't it's not catered. You know, every my, my thing about Americans, my one one of my beats about Americans is that they tend to just assume that everybody speaks English exactly. and that the world speaks yeah. English. And and actually English is the most spoken language in the world. But in America, I think we're the only culture that most cultures they're they're bilingual, at least right. bilingual, maybe right. even trilingual, but we're the only one. So I think it's I think it's just a healthy thing for American audiences to just be exposed to that. You know, yeah. they can always wait when it streams if they want to see it again. But, they and can that's put what the my friends were saying. The subtitles closed caption. On. Yeah. Well, that's if, what closed captions for. It. Yeah. But yeah. if we're and, their customers, it's the same thing as you don't show up yeah. an American movie in France without subtitles. So the French True, can true. Understand. Like, don't you want the people that you're well, trying to sell the movie to to understand? <laughs> what the movie is you do but i do know i yes but i know a lot of people that don't like the closed caption they complain yeah, i love it. A closed I caption. love it i love it I, well I, I also think this also was ex- the executive producer was a member of ziggy marley rita marley yeah. the family there was a part of yeah. me that was like maybe they just didn't realize that other people yeah. wouldn't understand maybe like, if you're a bob marley fan or if you listen to jamaican music and yeah. they don't feel like they have a huge accent yeah. Um, they may not be aware, but I highly doubt that. But still, yeah. not now the ver- well, Nikki, the version you saw did that was that preceded by a member of the family talking about yes. it. Yes, Ziggy Marley yeah. was. Okay. Yeah, he talked yeah. at the beginning of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, the family sanctions this. Obviously, I, you know, they yeah. they must be proud of it. Exactly. What did you think of the movie? What did you think of the film? Okay, so as a huge Bob Marley fan, and yeah. and because you told me last week that the person behind Ray with Jamie Fox that movie was also attached to this movie, correct? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, I forget yeah. the name of the director or whatever who was behind it. Well, but... well, I, well, I remember thinking, I remember thinking that the that, that no, I know what my 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 reference was for that. The the critics were complaining that the movie was like boilerplate biography, and I said, well, you know, they weren't complaining about the fact that Ray was boilerplate oh, okay. biography, and I didn't know there was a contradiction there. Anyway, I was trying to call. Well, out. I just felt it was a very super. Very, very superficial look at the man. See, a friend, of, a friend of mine said that as well, who was a big Bob Marley fan. Yeah, and yeah. so he, there was no depth to. Now, if you just like his music and, yeah. and you're like, and that's all you know about him, it was fun. I was never bored, which is my yeah. number one thing. If I'm entertained, so it's yeah. not that I don't, I don't suggest people go see it. But if you are a huge Bob Marley fan, there's nothing in it that you didn't already know. I don't okay. think that it yeah. gave it depth that yeah. a man of his stature. Should just see yeah, it. yeah. And I, I thought I, it, I, did, I know, didn't. Yeah, I, did. yeah. Well, I needed more Tim. Basically, I needed well, more. Well, yeah. Well, my criticism of it, it was, I think I said this about it, was that I wished it had been longer. Yes. Like it could, it could have used an additional half hour to just fill some stuff out. Because you're right, it, it kind of just, it hit high points. It hit stuff that a lot of people were were right. familiar with already. But you know, I wasn't going to knock it for that because you know I'm a fan and I just like I liked hearing the music and I thought the lead performance was really good so you know i yeah yeah i mean but, i liked it it was entertaining and of course i love listening to the music and then yeah. they use lyrics in their conversations yeah. but again yeah. it there is so much more to bob marley's life and i felt like they just gave us the surface kind of the cliff's notes of it all versus yeah. you know i, I well, wanted i wanted a, a more deeper experience and i didn't mm. get it but i did enjoy it the music's awesome so there you yeah, go. well, I'm that not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue with that. I yeah, I yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah, but it okay. did that. Yeah, it didn't ruin it for me because you know whatever. It I, and it's all, yeah, and I mean, and really, if you didn't know who Bob Marley was, I think it was like good enough to maybe yes. spike an, an additional interest in Absolutely. who he was and the music and blah 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 blah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay. Well, let's okay. talk about what's coming this weekend. This one I can't get away from always. Is June. <laughs> um, I didn't watch Dune one. Do I need to watch Dune one to understand Dune two? <laughs> 
Well, no, well, Nikki, you can tell your husband, first of all, right off the, right off the bat, that if he liked the first one, and I gather he did, because didn't he already get a ticket yeah. for this? <laughs> Actually, you know, I should mention, this is not going to open till next week, but the the embargo's lifted, so they kind of wanted us to review it this okay. week. So, I'm good. so anyway, if he liked the first one, he's going to love part two. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. Anyway, so this one is a continuation of the story. Did either one of you see the first one? The first no. The, no, no but why? Husband, it's no, all over the TV, though. See, it's all, so why? My husband already what? has tickets to this movie. Yeah, like the your big thing. Why, why aren't you? Why? Why not you guys? Meh. Um, I just, I, I don't know, and the, and the little vulture things. Yeah, look yeah. Weird to me, and I, don't, I, um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know Dune. I, it, yeah. it looked weird. Yeah. Uh, when uh-huh. I, my husband uh-huh. actually was watching the first Dune the other day, uh-huh. and Where the did giant look... worms come out yeah. of the sand. Yeah. That's all and I needed look... to see to know this movie is not for me. And uh-huh. They don't look like worms, Kim. They look like something else, in my opinion. But oh. I will say, well, it Kim, looked interesting. I'm, but maybe, I didn't watch maybe it. Maybe it, there's a little bit of a romantic drama between the worms. You don't know. Oh, anyway, okay. that was well. a bad joke. I was making a bad joke. <laughs> anyway, okay, okay, okay. Okay, anyway. so this is good, though. Okay, so this is good. Yeah, it's a continuation of the story. And uh, this part of the novel, uh, ha- having been filmed, is about... Uh, should I even say this? Will it make any sense? Okay, I'm going to real quickly here. Okay, it's about Paul Atreides. He's the main character. He's played by Timothy Chalamet. And he, in this story, in this continuation, he joins forces with the Fremen, who are this group of people who live on this desert planet named Arrakis, which is also called Dune, where their their joined forces are ab- about to wage a war against the Harkonnen, which are really like nasty people. And anyway, to say anything more about the plot, especially to those unfamiliar with Dune, will make even less sense. But okay. this is another example where the follow-up film to the first one in a movie franchise surpasses the original. I'm, I'm like thinking of here of like The Godfather Part Two and The Empire Empire Strikes Back, which I thought was better than Star Wars. But anyway, this Dune continuation was in fact so good that when it ended, and in and, and a similar way that when The Empire Strikes Back ended, which basically meant it was unresolved, I, I was expecting it and wanted it to go on for another two hours and 45 wow. minutes. That's how good it was. Really? And, I, and, and, I, I, and here's the thing. It, it's like, I admired the first Dune. I can't say that I liked it in the sense of wanting to return to it. The The director, uh, Denis Villeneuve, his films, his films like Arrival and Blade Runner 2049, they tend towards coolness. They're impeccably crafted and well-made and all that, but kind of emotionally remote. But this Dune Part 2 was so good that as soon as, as soon as I can carve out three hours of time, I'm going to go back to, to Dune, to the first Dune, because I think it's going to work better for me now because maybe it needed this part of the telling of the story to fully work as an individual movie. I don't know. It's funny you said your husband was watching the original. I wanted to watch the original again, but I just didn't have time. But this movie was so good, it made me want to see the original All right. again. Well, now I'm going to have to watch Dune number one and then watch Dune number two. If you sold y- me on yeah, that. I'm, wa- I'm wondering if it'll make sense. I don't know if it'll make sense if you don't see the first one. I, I would I, imagine. I, I feel like the story is a bit confusing. I would have to watch the first. I don't like being confused, especially for yeah, long movies. It, it, it's a complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, right. Yeah, I'm not going to sit through something and be confused. That would <laughs> yeah, okay. aggravate me to no end. So anyway, I thought. I mean, I I think Dune fans are just going to. I think it's going to be a. Oh, cool. Huge hit at the box office. Nice. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's yeah. Dune. Let's move on to Ordinary Angels with Hillary <laughs> Swank. Yeah. Our gal, Hillary Swank. I love Hillary Swank. You know, I was going to pass on this next movie. And I told a friend and colleague, Michael Snyder, who does those great movie and TV yeah. reviews on Mark Thompson's show, that I we were talking back and forth. And I said, hey, I'm going to probably pass on this one because I heard it's a faith based movie. Okay. And more on that in a bit. But I decided to give it a go anyway because of my i mean i love hillary swank i mean yeah. she stars in this so michael if you're listening that's what happened i caved out of my love for hillary <laughs> swank so okay and i'm kind of glad i did it's a drama this movie it's it's about this alcoholic kentucky hairdresser based on a true story too uh at the end they show all the real people and photographs and stuff and i'm going whoa so this actually happened anyway in 1993 this this lady 
undertook to save the life of this little local girl she didn't even know personally, but she had heard about. And she rallied her community to make them aware of and to fundraise for this five-year-old girl who was diagnosed with bil biliary, oh God, I can't remember, biliary artrasia, which was this, this very, very rare medical condition for mm -hmm. which there was no cure. And 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 the way around it was to get a, a liver transplant. But for a five year old to get a liver transplant, you know, you're on the waiting list forever. Right. And then, then you have this small window of time where you have to go to this special hospital. Do anyway. So it was all complicated. So a couple things about Ordinary Angels. It, yeah, it's a faith based movie produced by Kingdom Story Company, which makes those kinds of movies. But all of that faith based stuff which, you know, usually gets in the way for me of the story, especially when it appears like they're trying to, like, preach to you. And doctrinate you. And doctrinate yeah. you and proselytize. Yeah. But in this movie, it's really soft peddled. So it's like, okay. It, I mean, I don't think I would have known it was a faith-based movie if I hadn't known ahead of time it was a faith-based movie. That's how... That's how soft peddled it was so there's that and then there's hillary swank who's just terrific here her performance it kind of reminded me of like what julia roberts pulled off and aaron brockovich it's like that okay. kind of role nice. but swank makes it her own she's just so great she plays this flawed but kind of lovable kind of sad very determined lady uh and this is one of those movies that <sighs> Effect, I think it reasonably and effectively accomplishes what it sets out to do. You can criticize it and say, oh, that's manipulative, blah, blah, blah. But it develops this rooting interest in these characters. You really come to care about these people. And you come to care about the outcome of the plot, which is, will this adorable little ailing girl, oh, the little girl that played the girl, it was, I don't even think she was an actress, but she was so beautiful a child and adorable oh. you know and yeah and, and, and you're wondering you know is she going to get this medical help she needs because the clock is ticking on her life and it's an audience picture which aims for the heart and it tugs it in a big way yeah it's a am Hollywood. i gonna cry am i gonna cry yes, oh yes. Okay. well you know i'll love yeah, it then. Well, you may, yeah you have kids too so yeah i think you're gonna cry more than than i cried <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway it's it's a hollywood version of a true story you know it's calculated and the climax is a bit drawn out and piles contrivance upon contrivance, but it works and it okay. does make you feel good. So, you know, I mean, there you go. There you go. Ordinary angels in theaters. Perfect. Today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's go to drive away doll. Something completely different. Uh, yeah. On the other side, way on the other side of the movie spectrum, uh, is this comedy, uh, uh, it's a road trip comedy. It's called okay. drive away dolls, which is, you know, some of the reviews about this movie are joking. It's one half of a Coen Brothers movie, this movie. Uh, it's directed not by Joel and Ethan Coen, you know, who did Fargo and No Country for Old Men, but uh, just by Ethan Coen with a oh. screenplay by his wife, Trisha Cook. And it stars Margaret Qualley, uh, Geraldine Viswanathan, and Beanie Feldstein. Uh, Beanie Feldstein plays a, a jilted cop out for relationship revenge, but Qualley and Viswanathan, the two leads, play two lesbian friends, platonic friends, who are fleeing from mobsters on the road with this briefcase that the mobsters have to get, and they do everything in their power along the way to get this thing, including murder and blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much the story. And along okay. the way, along the way, they hit just about every lesbian bar from New York to Florida. So this is an unapologetically lesbian comedy. <laughs> and, you know, I wish I could say that it's good. I mean, there's some good things here. You know, it has all the trappings of this gonzo, crazy nuts comedy. But I don't know. It doesn't let's just say it doesn't always work. It, okay. it's, it's very contemporary, which I like. And it's like a kind of a throwback of sorts to like 60s drive and B movies, which is kind of cool. It's an offbeat take on the road movie comedy genre. It was originally titled Drive Away Dykes. Oh. Uh, like mm. I said, it's unapologetically lesbian, but the right. title mm -hmm. had to be changed because drive away dolls. Yeah. Drive away dykes couldn't go up on movie marquees in middle America. Like, you know, they wouldn't stand right. for it in the of South or in Oklahoma, you know, or maybe even Texas. Anyway, uh, oh God. I, I'm, I'm sending a little waffling and liking this. Well, movie. well, no, I, yeah, I, I like the actresses and stuff, but um, you know, it's funny uh, when the cast was in town, uh, Nikki and Kim for press interviews, 
which I, I did the press interviews and it, 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 they took me out of my comfort zone because, well, like talking about this movie, <laughs> take me out of my comfort zone. Those interviews were conducted at the Good Vibration San Francisco Vibrator mm-hmm. Museum. Did you know that there was a Vibrator <laughs> Museum in San Francisco? I, I did, did not. not know that. Now okay. I do, and now you do because there's a lot of dildos in this movie. I'm just going to come out and say it. <laughs> oh, they figure my. they figure oh, very my. prominently into the plot of all kinds, shapes, and sizes, including a wall dildo, which may or may not even be a thing. I don't even know. Anyway, what I liked about this movie is the men. I have so many were, questions. Yeah, well, you, you can ask them. I don't know if I'm going to answer. Like I said, like it, it, the, doing the this interview with these three women and really knowing how much dildos figured into this plot, it was it took me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> So, so I use that as an excuse to ask them, well, did playing these roles put you out of your comfort zone? Anyway, uh, I, there were things about it that, that I liked, but the right wing satire didn't always play. I can see what they were going for. You know, the comedy didn't right. always work. It seems like it's aspiring to be the comedy of a Fargo, but it just never, it never, has never it. gets mm-hmm. to those heights. Okay. So it's okay. There's moments with. I really couldn't get too excited about it. I liked the actresses, and I, I thought they were great. Performances were good. It just was off. There was something yeah. off about it. It's like they either didn't, like, go all the way, or they were, like, being, they were hesitant in going all the way. Mm. I don't know what, what it all was. All right, but, so kind of mixed a little bit. Some people might mixed, like it, but you know, some people might not. Yeah, you know, I guess, you know, San Francisco, hey, you know, it's a lesbian you comedy. <laughs> you there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, one Opens more one. Today. Open yeah. today. Okay. One more before we let you go. This okay. one looks creepy, BB. Stop motion. What the it, hell is that? I know. What did you wait? What did you say? Creepy what? Creepy DP. Creepy DP. It's creepy DP. It's a weird one. Um, you know, speaking of working or not working, I didn't think this movie was working, but about halfway through, boy, did I get a change of heart. It's really? a Brit yeah, it's a British psychological horror movie it's about this young woman who is a stop motion animator you know where they they have like these puppets and then they'll like move them like a fraction of an inch shoot a picture move them another fraction of an inch shoot another and then when they put it all together it's like an animation thing okay Okay. anyway she's making this movie this animated movie about a cyclops who who traded one eye with the gods so that she could see her destiny, but instead she sees her own death. Anyway, one day, this little girl from the apartment complex where the animator lives and works shows up and insists that this woman, she just comes out of the bloom, she insists that this woman making this stop motion animated film change the film to include a monster that she calls the Ash Man, which, and no spoilers here, the, the, I'm, I'm, but I'm going to say this anyway. The animator makes the changes, but then she slowly goes insane. She Ooh. creates these puppets she's animating out of things like the remnants of a dead fox and raw meat. Ew. It gets really ew. Wow. And it's a hard movie to talk about without not first having seen it. It kind of reminded me of... Kubrick's The Shining in that a lot of it when you thought about it didn't make a hell of a lot of sense but as dream logic you right. it kind of does make a sense and this movie does too make a, a lot of dream logic sense so I, I think it helps knowing that before you see it and in the end it's a pretty good horror movie it's a little frustrating and maddening at times but as a horror film it's this triumph over of, of, of mood and atmosphere with uh as as the kids say, a super sick music score. The music, <laughs> the music score in this movie is enough to make to give you nightmares. But it, and it's a movie too where it's meaning. If you want to go there, it's it's open to several interpretations. It's about what my takeaway was that it was about how despite what we think we think we really have control over certain universal forces, we really don't. And it's about the obsession, the obsessiveness required to make great art. Thematically, there's a lot kicking around in it, but for horror movie fans who just want to be freaked out, it's it delivers. It's very graphic too in the body horror department. Oh my God, the last third of this movie made me squirm and, and really it gets, it oh, get, it gets right. very, i'm pretty putting it on my list <laughs> so yeah it's different i'm it's scratching weird. it off of mine oh <laughs> God, yeah really no there i mean there's a scene where she's yeah never mind okay, anyway yeah, don't, don't ruin it for me tim don't but ruin really it for you me. know it, yeah it's about this like artist losing her mind i mean if i that if, if i had to say what it was about but that doesn't even do it justice it's very very weird but 
it pulls you in in a really good way. And really, it's 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 got the it's got the 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 grossness. I love it. Yeah. I love it. yeah. All right. Well, that that the the image I have on the screen just kind of grosses me out altogether. So uh, I will give a, you're going to give this a thumbs up then. Yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up for this. A mixed bag for drive away dolls, but a yeah. thumbs up for ordinary angels. Yeah, and a, a lot of thumbs up for Dune yeah. too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. a lot to watch this you weekend. All right, Tim. Thank you so much. Uh, we always appreciate Yay. having you on. Oh, we'll thanks, ladies. Friday. All Talk right. to you next week. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah, that that doll is just creepy. Creepy as creepy, hell. creepy, creepy. That's the thing of nightmares. Before, I'm telling you. Before we go, can I share yeah. one more story with you? Please. Did you see this? This is, is this? Brock Purdy driving a tractor <laughs> through the streets of San Francisco. What? Yeah. Why he, is he doing that? He's filming a John Deere commercial see, in that San guy's Francisco. He has so many sponsorships. He's up there in the tractor. Good for him. This is a four hundred fifty thousand dollar tractor, but he's. They say uh, this article in SF Gate posts about you know what he's doing in the commercial. Right. They say he is highlighting his farm boy image. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's like he definitely has that small town farm boy charm look he looks mm-hmm. like he's straight out of high school in all honesty he totally does um that good for brock purdy get I your guess money boy during his bye week he spent the um the season working on his fiance's family farm back in iowa nice I so mean, he's kind of a yeah, he's kind of a farmy kind of guy. He's 23. He went to Iowa State. And so that's kind of a, you know, I don't yeah, know. He, it's yeah. perfectly. There you go. Good, anyway, good. so yeah, that's his new sponsor. We'll have to keep an eye out John for that, for that yeah. uh, ad since obviously San Francisco is going to be in the background yep. of it. So there you go. All right. Let me quickly do all of the thank yous. Janet, thank you so much for your donation. $15. Janet. D with $5 as well. Thank you, D. Angel in the Bay Area. I love seeing you in here. Uh, Aww, thank you so much thank for the you, 15 dollars as well mama of three boys happy happy birthday for you and for the ten dollars thank you brian loving you eighteen dollars thank you twenty five dollars from maude you are so generous maude thank you thank you thank you harry came in with five dollars we love your guys' support same for pamela who came in with five dollars and steven starting us off with a buck fifty thank you thank you thank you guys i will send all of the happy birthdays to my birthday girl. Oh, and Bongo with mm-hmm. $5. I like Lynch's movie more than the novel. The first part of Dune is leaving Netflix next week. It may not make it through the wormhole by then. Okay, I guess I have something to watch while the kids yeah. are going crazy in my house this weekend. Um, thank you guys so much for supporting the show. Again, go to thenickymadoroshow.com. Our Patreon is linked. The PayPal email, thenickymadoroshow at gmail.com as well. We can't do it without you guys, so we really appreciate all your support. Mm-hmm. We'll be back on Monday. Have a fabulous weekend. Happy and- birthday, Marley. Happy birthday, Marley. Love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Nikki, you're all so awesome, you sprout, like a beautiful blossom, you're all so the best, I really can't rest, you're all so awesome.